Section 82.1 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, known as PACE, provides that the term confession includes any statement, wholly or partly adverse to the person who made it, whether made to a person in authority or not, and whether made in words or otherwise. Examples. John is charged with theft of a sandwich from a shop. In his interview at the police station, he admits the theft. This is a confession. John is charged with theft of a sandwich from a shop. On his arrest, he says to the officer, OK, OK, I just did it because I was hungry. This is also a confession. John is charged with theft of a sandwich from a shop. In his police interview, he says, I did take the sandwich out of the shop without paying, but I just forgot I had it. I meant to pay, it was a mistake. Although this is a mixed statement, it does fall within the definition of a confession because the statement is partially adverse to John as he accepts in it that he left the shop without paying for the sandwich, albeit he does deny any dishonest intention. When is a confession admissible? Section 76.1 of PACE provides that in any proceedings, a confession made by an accused person may be given in evidence against them in so far as it is relevant to any matter in issue in the proceedings and is not excluded by the court. A confession is hearsay, which is dealt with in a separate tutorial, but is admissible against its maker in accordance with both section 76 1 of PACE and section 118 of the Criminal Justice Act 2003. The starting point then is that confessions made by the defendant are admissible evidence against the defendant. Confessions are often thought to be reliable. Why would the accused person make a confession unless it were true? However, there have been numerous high-profile cases over the years where reliance on flawed confession evidence has resulted in a miscarriage of justice.